So now that you have your new anime girl voice, you might be wondering how to use this in a text-to-speech environment. Now, unfortunately, this is not natively supported. However, I have found a workaround, so I'm going to be teaching you how to do that today. Now, keep in mind, if you haven't seen our full tutorial on how to install the real-time voice changer, please go watch that now because that is a prerequisite to this video. Let's go and hop right into it. So where we left off on the previous video, we had this installed and it was working just fine with our current uh, microphone and stuff like that. Now we have also made a follow up video on how to transfer this into discord and other games. So if you're interested in that, you can go check that out in the description below. However, we have gotten a lot of requests on how to use this with a text to speech software. Now, likely if you're wondering how to do this, you've sort of looked around this uh, app here and you haven't seen a place to do it. And that's because there is no native functionality for this yet. They uh, might be working on this, um, but for now we sort of have to find a workaround. Now I spent a lot of time on other software trying to get this to work, uh, but I just couldn't without having to retrain your own model, which is likely not what you wanna do. You likely just wanna take the models that other people have trained and then just use that with the text to speech without having to worry about having to train your own new model. So the way the workaround works is in this, we can choose to upload a file. Now, when we select this, we can upload a file of anything. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna use two programs. We're gonna use a text-to-speech program to generate our text-to-speech file. And then we're going to just load that into here and then use this to record and generate the new voice from that text-to-speech. Now I'm gonna be showing you three different ways to get that text-to-speech file. So two of the ways is going to be with this software called Bark. Now, one way to use Bark is to install it locally onto our computer and use a web UI, which I know is going to be a great option for those of you who love to run things locally, which I do as well, but you really need a good computer and this was not working super well on my personal device. And for context, I have a GTX 1080, but for some reason it wasn't even using it, even though on installation I selected that I had a graphics card. So overall, I just think it's a little bit bugged or maybe I just couldn't get it working on my own personal device. Now, another way that we can use Bark is to open it in the spaces and they have their own uh, hugging face space and you can use that here and it works really fast and it works really well. And then the third option is to just use pretty much any other external text to speech website or application or whatever. Now, here's the thing. A lot of these cost money, which is why you might want to use a software like Bark because it's free and open source. This, you know, website, I'm just using big speak here. Um, you know, it works, but they, I think they have a paid option. You might be limited based on that free option just because they might make you pay to use it a certain amount of times. Now I'm going to start with Bark and specifically uh, the Spaces version, and then I'll, I will show you how to install um, the local version, but for now I just want to go through the basics of the Spaces version. Now the, the real downside to using Bark, and regardless of if you use it locally or online, it has a cap of 13 seconds. And what this means is you can only run text, like it'll only generate 13 seconds of audio, which means like this is about the 13 second mark. So you'd have to separate, you know, I don't know how much text you have to do, but if you're doing a whole paragraph, then you're not gonna, you're gonna have to space it out and regenerate it a bunch of times to get it into that, you know, larger file. So while we are limited to only like 13, 14 seconds of audio time, a pro that Bark has is having a lot of language support. Although I have heard that some of these languages are kind of shoddy. So, you know, you'll just have to go ahead and play around with it. And then another great thing about Bark is you can include some of these, you know, tags into the prompt and then it will generate that like into the audio itself. So like you can make these pretty complex strings and granted they can't be super long, but they can sound really realistic and you could insert your own laughs and you know, a clears throat. So you can get really specific. So this might make it a great option if you're trying to like do a book where, you know, you're trying to make the voices sound really realistic. 
And you do have to keep in mind that as the software evolves, that 13 second limit is going to eventually raise. So you will be able to record things longer. So it might be good to get used to how Bark works as I haven't personally seen any other text to speech that allows you to include these specific things. Now, I just asked ChatGPT to write out a paragraph, and this is just like the first two sentences of that full paragraph, um, because like I said, this is about what the 13 seconds can handle. The announcer tends to work best for me. Um, some of the speakers, because I'm not really including any of these, it sort of just tries to make it up. Um, so the software is relatively new, so it has a little bit of like quirks to it, but the announcer tends to be pretty clean. So just on the spaces here, you can just click the run and then it'll, it'll generate. And it ultimately doesn't take that long. Um, I know it, it, it does take, you know, a few minutes, which is a long time, especially if you, if you have to generate a lot of them. But overall, it is a lot quicker than running it on my local machine. And you will notice up here there is a queue. So I don't know if that means it's your personal queue. I don't, I'm not too familiar with how Spaces works internally. However, if a lot of people are using this, then it's going to slow down, you know, how soon you get your prompts. So that might be another reason if you have a good uh, computer system like why you might want to run it locally because you won't be waiting in a queue it'll just be you um and if it runs well for you you know it might be even quicker than this is and as we can see here it just finished up so it took you know maybe less than five minutes but still not too bad so if we just go ahead and give this a listen here welcome to the world of artificial intelligence and text-to-speech technology with the advancements in ai natural language processing and machine learning TTS has reached new heights of quality and realism. So yeah, as we saw there, not too bad. It sounds pretty realistic to me. It does sound a little bit robotic -y and you can tell it is a text-to-speech, but once you feed this into uh, the voice changer, it really doesn't sound too bad. So now for those of you who want to run this locally, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how to install it. It's relatively straightforward. So just go ahead and go to this GitHub link down in the description below, then just scroll down a little bit, click the one click installer. It's gonna take you here, click assets, and then this bark web UI dot seven Z, click it, and then it'll download its own file there. Now, if you're following along from our previous tutorial, you should notice um, you know, we have the regular voice changer and all the other stuff. Now I have been messing around with other things. So that's why my folder is a lot uh, more cluttered than yours should be. But just go ahead and drag that 7-zip file into here and go ahead and just extract it. Now, once you've extracted it, just go ahead and open that up. You should see these two files. Just go ahead and click the run.bat. Now you'll see it's going to open up this command prompt and you're going to begin the installation process. Now it should run without much input. The only thing you'll have to say is if you have an Nvidia graphics card. Now I personally don't know if this works without an Nvidia graphics card. Um, I think it should, it'll just have to use the CPU or maybe it'll have another workaround. But like I said, I have a graphics card, uh, an NVIDIA graphics card even, and it still used the CPU. So I don't exactly know why it wasn't working correctly, but you know, it is what it is. So you'll see here, it's gonna prompt you, do you have a GPU NVIDIA? And then you just type in Y for yes, or I guess N for no. And because I do, it's going to uh, install and I guess just work because that's what it does. And then this is just going to load for quite some time because there's a lot of things it has to install and like prerequisites that it has to install as well. So just let it run and it might take, you know, five to 10 minutes to install depending on your system. Um, but eventually it will finish. Now, because I already have this, I'm just going to go ahead and close out of the installation. Um, but it should install these two folders as well. And so now I'm back to just my original installation that works. So once you have this, you will not have this output folder. I made this separately, which is why it's all in caps. And this is just where I put the files that it generated. So that's why I did it. I would recommend that you do the same. But the only thing you have to really concern yourself with in this folder is the run.bat. Just go ahead and double click it and run it. Now, if you run into this issue, which I personally have, and I don't know why it does this, I, I just, you know, click any key to continue, it'll close. Just try rerunning it. 
eventually it worked for me. I don't know why it does this because it, it was working. Um, I think I let it sit like after this had happened, I let it sit for, you know, five minutes and then came back to it and then it, it worked. I was like, oh, OK, cool. I don't know why this worked all of a sudden, but um, yeah, like I said, this just does not work well with my system. It it I, I don't know why it's doing this. It shouldn't be doing this, especially since uh, this was working earlier for me. Um, and I haven't changed anything aside from changing the name to uh, let the other one install. But um, yes, I will keep trying this and we'll see if this ends up working. So I haven't been able to get that to work. But if it works on your system, that's great. It'll look very similar to this. Um, so, you know, just put in your input text, choose your person and then hit the run and then it'll just do its thing. And then it, it, like I said, it'll probably take you a while. Um, and then you'll have your generated audio. It won't look exactly like this, but it'll look pretty similar. It's a very basic, um, layout. So if it's working for you, fantastic, you've done it and it's working locally. So with Bark out of the way, let's go ahead and just look at this other one. I'm just using Big Speak, but really you can use whatever text to speech generator you like. Now, depending on the model and you know what it ends up sounding like, your results may vary within the actual voice changer itself. So just go ahead and try a few different ones and see which one works best for you. So for this one, I'm just gonna input my text. This is the whole paragraph that I generated. It's going to ask me to play a little game. Um, I can do that. Uh, well, there's a little card there, but it might not count it yet. Uh-huh. Okay. There's that's all stairs. There we go. I, I completed the game. Uh so once I confirm that I am not a robot, although we're using AI, which is you know almost robots, uh, we're gonna go ahead and click generate voice. This is relatively quick from my experience. Um, so it'll just work its magic and then create its uh, output here. And you can see here, you can use a lot more characters on this, although I do think that there is a cap for how many you can do. Although to be honest, you can probably just work around it using a VPN, but um, yeah, it'll create this output. Welcome to the world of artificial intelligence and text to speech technology. With the advancements in AI, natural language processing and machine learning, TTS has reached new heights of quality and realism. So yeah, this one did the entire paragraph and it sounds also pretty good. You can tell that it's a text to speech, but it still sounds pretty good. And with this one, you just click the three dots and download. You could probably also click this, but I prefer to do it this way because you never know. Sometimes those download buttons are ads. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and click that download button and it'll download. So now that we have the tests from all three of the different versions that we've showcased. Now, like I said, I couldn't actually showcase um the local one but like i said i had it working earlier so i don't know why it wasn't working again um but yes that file is right here so all we need to do is start the voice changer now once we're in the voice changer all we have to do is go to the input and then choose a file and then go ahead and click this folder icon and then just go ahead and select whatever file you want to use so i'll showcase the bark local first now it's going to start automatically, but if you haven't started the voice changer yet, just pause it and then set it back to the beginning. So now we're going to go ahead and start it. It's going to take a second to uh, load there for a little bit. And then once we're ready, we can go ahead and press the start button down here on this file and then sort of just see what happens. Artificial intelligence speech technology. With the advancements in artificial intelligence, natural language processing, and machine learning, text-to-speech has reached new heights of quality and realism. So it sort of cut out at the beginning there, but I think that's just because it was warming up. Welcome to the world of artificial intelligence and text-to-speech technology. With the advancements in artificial... Yeah, so you can see once it warmed up a little bit, I just restarted it by dragging that there, and then it just worked. Now, the reason this one sounds particularly bad is because I wasn't using the announcer settings. I was using uh, one of the English speaking settings. And so it just sounded weird. It tried to like generate some background music in there. So overall just wasn't the best. That's why I chose the announcer. So if we go ahead and select the announcer um, with the online, then it should sound a lot better. So we're just gonna go ahead and start that here. Welcome to the world of artificial intelligence and text-to-speech technology. With the advancements in AI, natural language processing, and machine learning, TTS has reached new heights of quality and realism. So overall, it wasn't the best. You know, it did sound like, you know, there was a little bit of, you know, text-to-speech-ness in there. But overall, you know, if you didn't have any other option, it's a pretty good alternative to just using your own voice. 
Now, if we're to select the big speak, which is, you know, the full paragraph, we can see it in all its glory. Welcome to the world of artificial intelligence and text-to-speech technology. With the advancements in AI, natural language processing, and machine learning, TTS has reached new heights of quality and realism. This cutting-edge technology can transform written text into lifelike spoken words, enhancing accessibility for visually impaired individuals and making interactions with digital devices more engaging and interactive. As the boundaries of AI continue to expand, TTS will play an increasingly vital role in revolutionizing the way we communicate and interact with technology. Now, this doesn't just work with our my Gouda model here. We can go and try the Markiplier voice. It didn't save my settings from last time. I think it was about negative 10-ish worked for me. But like I said, you know, it's sort of dependent on the voice that you use with the text-to-speech. So go ahead and just mess around with the settings. You'll have to refine and tune it and stuff like that. But um, I think negative 10 should work for this. So let's go and try this out with the Markiplier voice. Welcome to the world of artificial intelligence and text-to-speech technology. With the advancements in AI, natural language processing, and machine learning, TTS has reached new heights of quality and realism. This cutting-edge technology can transform written text into lifelike spoken words, enhancing accessibility for visually impaired individuals and making interactions with digital devices more engaging and interactive. As the boundaries of AI continue to expand, TTS will play an increasingly vital role in revolutionizing the way we communicate and interact with technology. So yeah, overall, it sounds pretty good and it should work with any of your voices that you already have preloaded. Now, I do acknowledge that it is kind of annoying to have to generate it on, an, on one website and then take it into this other website. But this is the best workaround that I have found if you don't want to train your own model. Now, if you would like to train your own model and then use that for text to speech, you know, I'm happy to make a specific video on that because the software for that, you know, it's only it's all in one kind of package and it should just work, you know, better together. But it is a lot more work up front because you have to find the audio clips, you know, make your own model. So it is sort of just like depending on like, do you want to do more work up front or, you know, more work in the middle, you know, to just sort of make it work. And if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. I'll try to answer as many of you as possible. And to discover more cool AI tools like this one, check out our website at ai-search.io.